Dottori, welcome back. And in this video, I will be trying to create a simple make file for our build system for sorry for our test such that we can use it as an input so as a you know a hint to support creating make files in the build system why do we need creating to create make files main reason is i would like to be um, able compiling uh, the tests on linux so i'll start by creating make file that, that, that can compile the test suite on, on Mac OS. And my, my intuition tells me that with um, not, you know, so many big changes, the same make file can compile everything on Linux. So I have been reading a little bit the documentation of new make, uh, GNU, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce it that, uh, because that's how I would say it in Italian, but, um i think we can start um i even have some notes on the weird syntax used by by the make command um and um so yes let's just start this so i'm going to create a new folder in the projects so we have underscore build where all of the generated projects are getting created where the um, SC build generator is creating Xcode and Visual Studio folders. I'm going to create a make folder manually, creating a file called make file. And uh, with the make file, I'm going to, um, yeah, start typing some make file syntax, I guess. So I would start with a target name. So, um, yeah so we don't repeat it everywhere so this is how you define a variable instead with just um, the colon this is how you define a target because make file likes to create this you know dependency chain between uh, targets and prerequisites that can be other targets such that it can build this this uh this graph where uh, it will know how to generate every file starting from you know the 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 things that have no dependencies and and, and slowly um, building everything that is needed also in a parallel way if needed and um, and that's what we are going to do so i i think we should give it um, like sc test as a name or something like that let's make it like this maybe we can even make it like well, I guess when we generate multiple projects in a single make file, because a workspace can contain multiple projects, we will need to have multiple of these. So this variable should be like prefixed with the project name, something like that. Let's try doing it like that. Yeah, why not? Um, so I would like to, so I would like to create like an object file. So let's say um, I would like to compile the um, sc.o file. And this is how I can define, you know, where does the sc.o file come from? This comes from, let's pick the relative directory of sc.cpp compared to the location of make file, which is three levels up because we need to do make projects build bindings uh, cpp and sc.cpp we need to use tabs this is important because make file needs tabs and we can use the um, cxx a built-in uh, i don't know is it like a variable or or predefined command or something like that which expands to C++, I get, I think, and that can be overridden when when uh, building with a different compiler. And but in general, this is like the C++ compiler. So on C lang on GCC, we are going to say, yeah, you have to compile this. So we want to generate an object file, um, and now I just need to remember this weird syntax which is the target name 
I don't know why they have been using something like that. I guess they had very good reasons that I cannot comprehend, but this is how you generate, you basically refer to the, to the target, which would be sc.o, and we need the source file. So with this guy, um, the first prerequisite, that's the syntax. Don't ask me why, I, I will never be able to remember something like that. So I made sure to write it down um, and I will just copy and paste, hopefully. Um, I think this should be enough to get us, um, you know, up and running with, with, with some um, make, make file. So yeah, this is how I, I, I've died, I've tried uh, creating the make file. So make dash C, um, we can, so this, this allows us to invoke the make file without, um, yeah, something like that, without changing the current directory. So let's try to make it. Okay, we have too many errors, but we actually have been able to um, compile this thing, this file. I guess most of the errors are just because we are not using C++ 11, um, 14, because the, or even 11, probably so the default is not even C++ 11 because that's complaining about reusing and references. But yeah, the command is C++, C++ dash C dash O and so on. So let's make it, um, what was like STD the syntax? Um, is it like STD 14, STD? Let's try STD equals, uh, was it like something like that? Yeah, could be. Trying again. Yes, nice. We even have this O file generator. That's beautiful. Okay. Now I would like to do and just copy and paste so that I can, I know we can use the wildcards, but in the end we are going to needing to write a rules for each file because because in the SC build system, a file could be in multiple projects and it can have different flags. So it's basically, if we start using wildcards, then I will have to change it one second after. So let's not just, let's just not use them. So let's try to compile SC test. This is again in, in the tests. Um, sc test sc test dot cpp and let's do one by one i like to do things incrementally uh oh it's building just the first first target correct so i want to create like what it is typically done here is creating an old target with the things you would like to build. Let's try to do like that. Yeah, this works. Yeah, it complains because there it needs this um, define, which we can for now define just to be something empty, I guess. Yeah, this needs the escape code. I don't even know, should I do it like that? Okay. Now I need uh, the other file, which is the test unity build, which is in the same directory. So saving some typing. I don't know if we need this SC compiler library path. Maybe not. Um, yeah, let's try. Yeah, it works. We generated the three object files. Excellent. So, um, now I would like to 
maybe put those flags together into a variable so we don't have to type uh, so I'll do it like I don't know SC test um, how can I call this calling name naming things is the most terrible things let's call it CXX flags I don't know why why I keep saying I don't know I don't know um, and let's copy this guy here and we can replace the variable so everyone will get even this weird compiler path which is something uh, it's used just by the the tasks to know where the library is so that some tasks like the plugin know where to source files from let's see nothing to be done for all um okay yes because the files already exist so let's define it um uh let's not call it all let's call it object file let's see tasks uh like i don't know inter no uh, how how do you even call this like um yeah files object files and we make the all target depend on sc object files um yeah we need to be able to clean this so maybe let's make it also a clean and how does the clean work the clean can just be i think air m what was the syntax for that so when we when we are trying to to clean something it will need to um to do uh, a remove command for each of the generated files and this can be achieved by by doing just rm on the or we can just remove an entire directory so probably that's easier but to do so, we need to put the files into a subfolder. So let's put them into a subfolder. Yeah. So um, I'll say, let's say, uh, let's call it intermediate. Oh, we have the intermediate folder actually. So we can say um, dash dash something like, one level two level up inter need it make make yeah why not something like that of course this is now changing the the name of the target so we need to reflect it into the yeah into the list of files here reported so let's try no such file of directory of course because there is no such file or directory so let's make it for now um, are two levels up enough so we are make file project intermediate oh yes we have sc test uh, yeah let's make it like this okay so we can delete these files we have them here now um, the clean can just be removing this very folder so if I make clean, yeah, yes, it's removing that folder. So let's try now to wrap this in variables. This could be an intermediate um, directory. Let's just call it intermediate dear, which is intermediate SC test and we can use the target name 
Um, yeah, this is all variable substitution everywhere. So intermediate tier. Um, Maybe we also add, um, yes, we also need the make here. So this can be replaced everywhere by intermediate tier SC test intermediate tier. Does this even work? No, because of course we are not creating the directory. How do we create the directory? I have investigated how to do this. It's pretty, um, it's using a weird feature of make, which is, all, I think it's called the order only prerequisite. So let's create a rule. Uh, it's, I mean, it's not that difficult. It's just, you know, I find this, syntax not extremely intuitive but we can work with it so let's create a target which will create um the directory so uh we can create a target that has the same name as the um, as the variable but even echo like creating directory and this is like um, compiling fc.cpp. So we can use this to debug how things are going. sctest.cpp, and this can be as test unit build. Creating directory, intermediate directory. So this can be mkdir-p. Um, oh, what was like first target name? So, and to make this as a prerequisite, but breaking the dependency chain, because that was the, we cannot just place it as a prerequisite of this file because the way targets are, are, are if we list target, uh, sorry, prerequisites in this way, then um, first of all, we have no control on, on the order in which it will get um, created. But the, the, the other problem is that, actually, no, that this will work, but um, we will create the directory for every um, compiled unit um, and for every invocation of the compiler, which is, you know, not ideal. Um, so we need to make this as a prerequisite of the linking phase or maybe not because this is the intermediate there. So yes, we need this a prerequisite of, of the actual creation of each file. Yeah. So the order only syntax is, is this one. I have, um, um, I've been looking this up called order only or order dash only yeah order only prerequisite yeah with the pipe and it says they are appended um, they are appended to the list of order only prerequisites it can even be the normal prerequisite can be empty and um, and, and they are basically built before a target that without forcing the target to be updated, which is what we want here, because we don't want to create then a, a, a loop. This is this allows us to break the dependency loop. That's how I see it. So let's let's go back to the um, to the actual thing here. Let's see if this works in my previous tests. This kind of worked. Let's see if it will now so if we make yeah it's creating the intermediate directory and compiling all the files even if we are still passing this bogus compiler compiler path so can we even make something like that 
yeah we always need to clean so let's make it like clean and make dash c underscore build uh, projects make um yeah something like that so okay now what else should i be doing i think uh, i need to link can i even link this oh where are the oh it's invoking drm rf because it's yeah it's in the all yeah it's it's doing the all we definitely don't want the clean in the off. <laughs> yeah, no, this is this is fine. So the clean should probably be in the. Um, it's called like the phony target. Was it like that? Something like that. Which are the the way I understand it um, are the the targets that are not uh, part or they are not basically files. They are just commands. So this should be should be working. Now, how can I improve this? I want to want to be creating some variables for release and for debug and add add the flags for it. So let's make it. Yeah, let's build the CXX flags with something. I don't know. SC dash config flags. I think we definitely want to define like the underscore debug define. I think the flags um, for for debugging are like dash g dash gdb. I have them in, I think in the plugin file. Yeah, these are the flags we want dash g. I think there was a gdb also flag somewhere to to debug but that's that's not so important so we definitely want a dash g this is for like debug flags um and we want to do like an o zero something like something of this kind i think there was a g gdb but i'm not sure i mean we'll, we will try um now oh yes we want to make it maybe sc test uh config flags so um, yeah let's prepend them and one, one thing also i would like to do is to append like the default flags which are c xx flags um, because these are what are passed by the environment if someone is liking to pass in pass them this way now um, let's try if this even works yeah well this is just variable substitution so not anything crazy um we can create the release flags which we can make defining the end debug to one we want an o3 or o2 or something like that we don't want the dash g we i don't know we can keep it like that um and we need to select i don't remember the syntax was it like if 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 a q if a q so if uh a q um was it like dollar config uh, 
Um, oh no, no, that's a variable that I declared in my test. So yeah, let's let's say that if someone wants to build release or debug, they will just pass um, like config equals release. So if config, um, I don't remember the, was it like equal? Oh no, here it says like with the com. Okay, it's not sure if we need the, no, maybe we don't need this one. Yeah. Let's try like this. Uh, or was it end ec and end if? Is it, do we have any else? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Let's see. Yeah, we got the O3. Beautiful. Now, um, so maybe the intermediate directory can be parameterized on the configuration. So let's make it just target name underscore config. Yeah, maybe make, we'll make it like this. Make, so will we make acid test debug or release? Let's make it debug. Uh, oh, yeah, we need to make it so that in other cases it's just debug. Yeah. Okay. This this is starting to look nice. Um, now. Where can I, I think other flags are meant to be added by default, like CPP flags. There was something like that, it was like CPP flags. Yeah, because the, um, this is how it works. You have this C preprocessor flags that are added to both C programs and C++ programs. And then you have the C flags only to C programs and CXX flags only to C++ programs. So you always want to prepend or, or append the, um, the CPP flags. Can I even copy text from here? No. Um, dollar CPP flags and um yeah so we have the config flag we have the let's say the global flags shared between c and c++ the the configuration specific ones are you know c++ specific ones plus the globally defined c++ specific flags we could be creating a similar um variable for C files, but I I don't think we have C files in the project so far. But you know why not? Let's do it like that. I mean this will be unused for now. So now we need to be linking something. Um, how do we link? Um, hmm. First thing I would do is creating and declaring a target directory. So let's say target, it's um, output with the same pattern, output. Now, um, we can define another rule for this one, yeah, target directory. And 
and now we need a rule for for linking so the rule for linking uh, let's see if this is still working okay this still works the rule for linking hmm, it's mm, yeah target directory sc test um but maybe we should use target name oh no yeah so this depends on the object files so to build the target we need the object files built and we need the target directory created this will be this will be linking linking park somewhere i belong linking um target name um how do we link um we definitely don't want the c we don't want this guy we want the the list of all prerequisites i think which is probably this one is it something like that that will work i guess we will we will figure it out this is compiling oh so the linking is not even being invoked and we can see from the log actually we can at some point hide the the, um, the invocation of commands one if we don't need them by prepending the link or maybe we can make it parametric but yeah for now let's keep it now um so we need to make this target invoked somehow so our old target should be the target name yeah this guy should be our target which maybe we can avoid cleaning so some files are already up to date uh it's invoking the linking but this is completely wrong of course because we are passing compilation flags we need here the ld flags so let's define them uh, so sc test ld flags how can we make them um there was a uh, like the stock ld flags uh and then we have all of, all of the std lib no std lib and so on that we need to be passing so let's use for sure this one um yeah Mm. not sure if this is working yeah this is not passing anything but we have the list of files here so we can use yeah we can use it here directly and i don't remember if the ld flags can go before or after well, let's put them before and let's see no input files why there is no input files hmm no input files so the command that is is being given 
Let's remove them. Why is not even printing the, the list of files? None, not sure why it's not printing the list of files. Is not printing the list of files oh because I've made this a target and not a variable ah so bad yeah yeah let's put them back where they were try now missing target pattern object files yeah because we need to make it hmm. not sure what's going on missing target pattern object files hmm. <laughs> so bad i'm really so bad yeah so this now works but we get a bunch of linking issues. These are like linking issues because of the framework. So we need to add to the LD flags, the frameworks that are linked. I think we have them in the, in the SC build file, which are framework core yeah, core foundation and core services. These are like the ones we need. So was it like dash dash framework? Um, yeah, it should be like that. Let's try. It's a single dash. uh core foundation framework not found yeah because you need to specify it without the the extension now undefined symbols um oh this also needs the sc build file so let's add it where is the sc build file it's in the root yeah so sc build we can call it like this compiling sc build oh this works we have this a dot output file beautiful but we don't want that file to be there we want that file to be at the target name so was it like dash o the same as when generating the files let's see make uh, this is where the intermediates are and this is where we have our generated executable he finally did it so i'm pretty sure this will not work because we are hard coding this path incorrectly so this will cause many will probably assert i think at the very beginning if this is not a valid directory so we have to when well, we can try 
but I know for sure that this will will not work but let's see if at least it, it starts um, yeah this asserts in the line sctest.cpp line 160 yeah because it wants the absolute path of of this one so let's fix it um uh, i can i can create um sc library path that is will it work if we make it like the, no we have to make it absolute we have to make it absolute and i think i've seen that there was a directory some built-in or was it like a posix square pvd or like core core there that was the guy yeah, it sets the Cordier to the path name of the current working directory. Beautiful. So we just need Cordier. I'm not sure if we need also the, the forward slash, probably yes. So let's make it here, uh, dollar sclibrary.path sorry where are we oh we have to clean and make it and our compiler library path is there and we can try executing this it works yes wow no now i guess it's just a matter of cleaning the script a little bit which i will probably do offline because it i i think it's going to be very boring because yeah this this is what we need the rest is just uh cleaning the the file a little bit in in making making it more reusable i think this will work yeah what what can we do to improve can we just list i don't know the frameworks maybe in a separate variable so we make an sc test dot frameworks being equal to this thing no just making it more more clear we want readability so we have to keep iterating until things are smooth i think we also need to link some libraries but this was not complaining at all like ptrad or something like that oh one thing we are not doing here is using the configuration like is it like compiler like enable config yeah so we need to define the enable config thing which um enables configuration file that allows the test to be customized with a simple header where you can you know add some defines um so let's make like some common flags sc test um like come on and we will define this compiler enable config to be one um uh, yeah let's add it here probably also here even if we don't have me uh, the C files. 
So this now complains because it can't it cannot find the scconfig file. The scconfig file is here together with the task, but we have to add the include directory for it. So let's add the include directory to be one, two, three tests sc test. We need to make it parametric. So um, yeah, well, this this the this include directory is highly dependent on where the test is. But yeah, for now, I'll just customize it with the target name. Why not? Yes. Now we have the include directory as well. So you see, this is pretty. Once you get the, the the gist of it, it's pretty flowy because you keep adding rules that are just composing as strings at the end of the day. Um, what else can we be adding or cleaning this, cleaning up a little bit? Um, I don't know. Oh yeah, one pro this problem that we we have where it forces us to to clean. Sorry, no. What I wanted to say is if I if I modify the make file, this this is not changing. Even you know, if I change a target, this is not being rebuilt. So I have been trying to look for a way to make this happen and to make this happen you have to do something like that like uh, you create a make file dot I don't know touched or basically another file that will be created from the make file itself and when this rule is invoked you just touch the um, the target name in this case, so then this make file touched file, and you invoke the clean. Uh, no, was it like dollar make clean? Now mm, this will probably still not work actually it worked the first time by doing a remove then it says the make file touched is up to date which is not even something we want to happen because we don't want this to be the first target so this is now building but if we rebuild if we modify this is still not working why because we have to make this part of the dependency chain of make file and we do this by including it yes so this is not something that i invented i figured out this on stack overflow i guess somewhere I just remember that I had to to create this new file, make the make file dependency for it, touch this file that is created, you see side by side with the make file and as you know, the timestamp of the last modification of the make file. And when the make file has a high, you know, more recent timestamp, this rule will get kicked, will touch the file to update the timestamp and clean basically invoke the cleaning command so um, so this works hopefully so this is now nothing to be done but if I modify it it will clean and rebuild beautiful one thing that I wanted to be adding is also the support to rebuild for cpp file so if i modify cpp file right now this is being rebuilt but if i modify like an included file like i don't know this header file nothing will get rebuilt yeah 
to do this we need to generate the there there is support into the compilers to generate make file basically dependency um, definition for make files for each file being compiled I think the flag was MJ or actually MMJ I have a note here um, no, MJ was the JSON thing, which is the the one needed for compile command was MMD. I remember because it was like the same as Markdown. Um, so let's try it. We basically add it to every file and this can go just in the common rules. Yeah. Actually, we don't need the quotes here. MMD, MMD. This will probably create this .d file, which, as you can see, they create they contain in the same with the same syntax as make the you know sc.cpp, which becomes sc.o. Depends on all of this headers and cpp files so if any of them is modified please rebuild this target now this still doesn't work because we have to include this target so there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between this dot d file and the dot o file so we need to create another rule which is kind of a rule that is just replacing the the c file sorry the o file extension with the uh, d file extension um, and we need to include it because we want to include basically these files into the make file so what i have done in my tests hopefully i can remember was including include um, the object files and we have to replace uh, the dot o with the dot d um, no such file or directory um, why Hmm. Oh, because I'm cleaning and when cleaning those files do not exist. And and to prevent this, we need I think there is a there is a command no, there is the include needs to to come without um, there is a syntax to make the include without error if the file does not exist. There was um, yeah, this one dash include. If you want make to simply ignore a make file which does not exist cannot be remade or with no error message use the dash include directive so we make the dash include direct in directive um, I will place it here okay okay now if we try to rebuild and we modify one of the included files yeah this should be working okay beautiful what else do we want to be doing now um i think it's fine i think the the file being created is 
quite close to what I would like the system to generate. So I will keep maybe iterating a little bit more offline such that is a little bit more clean and and then we'll see we'll try to create the build um the the build let's say subsystem or i don't know um what's called generator that will output something like that in another video thanks for watching and have fun